In examining the experiences of men in American society during the 1940s and 1950s, striking continuities become evident. The 1940s laid a significant groundwork for the ideological conformity that characterized the subsequent decade. Men were constantly pressured to conform to societal norms, grappling with expectations of being breadwinners and providers, and the Cold War's relentless demand for ideological purity. This environment constrained individuality and insisted on adherence to a prescribed set of values, reflecting a broader struggle that continues to resonate with men today. During World War II, American society was suffused with a robust sense of nationalism and unity against shared enemies. This patriotic fervor, fortified by the burgeoning anti-communist sentiment that marked the beginning of the Cold War, initiated a culture of uniformity where deviation from accepted norms sparked suspicion. Dissenting voices, particularly those expressing sympathy with socialist or communist ideologies, were marginalized. Loyalty oaths and background investigations became common as the government sought to weed out subversives. Citizens were encouraged to report suspicious activities, leading to an atmosphere of mistrust and fear, pitting friends, family, and neighbors against one another. The widespread anxiety about communism seeped into every aspect of life, impacting professions, educational institutions, and social interactions, cultivating an environment where strict conformity was rewarded, and deviation was harshly punished. The McCarthy era subsequently compelled men to navigate a politically charged environment fraught with peril. Accusations of communism could lead to severe repercussions, including public humiliation, loss of employment, and legal ramifications. Senator Joseph McCarthy's relentless witch hunts targeted not only government employees but also writers, actors, and ordinary citizens, turning the nation's attention to the perceived communist threat. Hollywood artists suspected of communist allegiances were blacklisted, and the Motion Picture Production Code dictated stringent moral standards, making the once thriving industry a battleground of ideologies. The Lavender Scare, where men accused of homosexuality were systematically purged from the U.S. State Department, marked yet another chapter in the era's widespread social policing. Driven by the belief that men who had sex with men were security risks, hundreds of men lost their jobs, reflecting a broader trend of societal conformity and control. Fast forwarding to contemporary times, the rise of woke culture has ushered in a new set of challenges and pressures for men. The expectation to align with so-called progressive values is potent, with dissent leading to public condemnation, social exclusion, and career jeopardy. Social media's omnipresence amplifies these dynamics. For example, emerging requirements for Hollywood films to cast a minimum number of minority participants parallel the uniformity enforced in Hollywood during the 1950s. This prioritization of diversity over most qualified mirrors the previous era's strict adherence to particular ideologies and values, albeit for different reasons. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and the Actors' Equity Association have codified this shift through newly introduced film requirements. This illustrates how industries that were once challenged by McCarthyism and ideological suppression now enact policies that echo the past's rigid insistence on adherence to specific norms. Similarly, the push for orthodoxy and conformity of the past finds echoes in today's cancel culture. During the McCarthy era, the Red Scare led to an aggressive pursuit of individuals suspected of having communist sympathies, such as screenwriter Dalton Trumbo, who was blacklisted for over a decade for his political affiliations. In parallel, the modern era has seen individuals like James Damore, a former Google engineer, fall from grace for expressing views that deviate from accepted norms. Daymore faced termination after writing an internal memo criticizing Google's diversity policies, arguing that biological differences might explain the gender gap in tech. Much like the McCarthy era's blacklists, today's cancel culture can lead to social isolation, professional fallout, and public vilification. The State Department purges of the past find an unsettling parallel with today's sexual identity political climate. Today's era, while more tolerant of personal privacy, presents other complex challenges. Men who continue to see gender as their primary identification and who may not subscribe to woke orthodoxy or embrace expanding definitions of gender can face social exclusion and professional setbacks if they choose to make their voices heard. Moreover, the trend of deprioritizing Caucasian men in hiring practices has contributed to men feeling marginalized and dropping out of the workforce. 
The overarching theme in both periods is societal pressure to conform to prevailing norms or face banishment as a consequence. In reflecting upon the American experience of the mid-20th century and contrasting it with contemporary times, it becomes clear that the pressures for orthodoxy and conformity have remained a constant thread in the fabric of society. Whether it's the staunch anti-communism of the Cold War era or today's rising demands to align with emerging ideologies, the expectation to conform persists. Men, in particular, have faced this unrelenting push, adapting to shifting cultural norms, ideologies, and expectations that have shaped their roles and identities. While the particular manifestations of these pressures have evolved, the underlying call for alignment with dominant societal values endures. The tension between individual beliefs and emerging trends continues to resonate with men today, reminding us that the struggle for authentic self-expression in the face of societal demands is a timeless challenge.
want to know if there are people in the moonlight. Will the idea of bluebirds in the moonlight fall me when I'm with you?
Much obliged you hopped on board for this snazzy trip through American life in the 1940s and 1950s, all captured through nifty vintage photographs. If this flick's got your motor running, don't be a square. Click on that jolly bucket of bolts to subscribe to the channel for more top drawer content just like this.